This is where we left off in the last video, but let's do a quick recap of what we're doing. To start with, we are making this knife, and specifically these handles. These handles are grade 5 titanium bow song handles, and this is the process of making this knife. We started off by machining a fixture, and once the fixture was done, we went ahead and machined a sub pallet for the fixture. And that sub pallet looks like this and is used like this. We go ahead and put the handles on for the second operation. They screw on and then they go on the main fixture. If you're interested in making the pallet, go ahead and check out the full length video right here. And so you can see the full process and not just a 40 second recap. Now that the recap is done, we are starting with the first operation of machining the handles. Here you can see all the op ones finished in the palette and how they look after their first machining operation. I go ahead and take the first one out of the palette to quickly inspect it. Everything looks good to me. All the tapping was done correctly for the second operation. Now that these handles are done, it is time to move on to the next set of handles. I had a small stock issue, whereas the stock for these handles is much smaller than the stock I used for the previous ones, and they don't fit correctly in the pallet. This is very bad. Normally you'd have to end up scrapping a pallet, but I decided to try something else. I went ahead and 3D printed some shims that go in between the stock and the pallet, which help the pit pull clamps clamp it. They seem to work pretty well, and so I go ahead and try a run with them. I quickly test to make sure everything tightens properly and that they hold pretty well. After the test, I conclude that they hold well enough to at least attempt machining, and so I go ahead and try it. After getting it in there nice and tight, I go ahead and try some impact testing to see if it's going to move. I then go ahead and run the handles and everything seems to go very well. I did have one small issue where I put the wrong size shim in with the stock and it did pull out, but I went ahead and fixed that during process. Now it's time to move on to op two for the handles. As you can see here, I did change some geometry from my prototype handles. I cut out a little weight pocket here. I rounded this corner, which was sharp while chaplaining and feeling it. And I cut out some weight here. you can see the changes inside of the handle. Firstly, that rounded corner, that weight cut out there, and some weight cut out in that slot. Here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison. I then go ahead and test and make sure all my threading went well. I'm using eight by 32 screws, and so I had to make sure that tap worked correctly. I had quite a bit of trouble tapping these. Um, I tried thread milling them first with a single point thread mill, and I ended up breaking that pretty quickly, so I started doing rigid tapping. I might make a video on that later, but for now I'm just going to skim over that because I don't want this video to take forever. Now it's time to go ahead and put these on the pallet. I make sure that they line up correctly, and then I go ahead and thread them in. Now that the pallet's in, I go ahead and inspect everything and make sure everything's flat and tight. Everything looks good, so it's time to go ahead and run this pallet. I start by loading it on my Pearson Mini Pallet System. I haven't made a second pallet for this yet, even though I should do that because that is the best way to run these pallets.
Okay, the op tubes are now done and you can see they're looking pretty good. So I go ahead and take the pallet apart so you can see them. And then I go ahead and take the screws out so that I can get the handles. Here you can see the finished handles. And you can see some machining errors. Firstly, you can see a big old burr up there, which isn't supposed to be there. And you can see some weird finish issues. Now, these are the first tests on these handles, so I'm going to go ahead and rerun a pallet of these and see how they turn out after that. Before I run another batch of handles, though, I'm going to make sure all of these tolerances are correct and that there's nothing else I should change. So I go ahead and get these ready for assembly. You can see how they go together here. I then drill out some of the holes. I leave the pins undersized in the mill so I can ream them out on my drill press so that the pins don't end up oversized because the pins do have to be a very tight tolerance and with reaming them in the drill press they end up being a very tight slip fit. I then go ahead and weigh them to see what the difference is. As you can see here, these weigh 0.571 ounces, and the old ones weigh 0.652 ounces. You can see there's a big difference in the weight, which really helps the knife overall. I then go ahead and start the assembly process. So I put the handles together, and then I take apart this other knife to steal the blade for it, because I don't currently have any other blades made for it. Here you can see the knife is now assembled and went together uh, about first try. There was a little cleanup I had to do with the washers and stuff, but it ended up going together really well versus the last batch I did, which was a nightmare to assemble and get everything working properly. You can see here the weight is 3.92 ounces without any weights in it. Now that the assembly test is done, it's time to run another set of handles and to fix these problems. With this batch of handles, I start by machining them down lower so that there's more material to take off the top of them. Whereas the first ones had very little material left over. As you can see here, there's no burr or anything left over on these, and so they ended up machining much better. I go ahead and take them off the pallet. And you can immediately see they look a lot better. You can see that this handle has no burr issues, but I did end up running an old program, which is where I had some issues with my rounding bit going in the wrong place and you can see that top corner has this weird step on it. This isn't a huge issue functionally but it's really annoying and blems these entire set of handles and so I go ahead and fix that and then run another set. You can see here these are the final set of handles. I didn't bother filming it for a third time but you can see all the surface finishes are nice and there are no weird steps on them. They are a bit boring though so I am going to be anodizing them. But before that, just go ahead and get a good look at everything and how shiny and nice it is. I start by throwing them in the tumbler to take any sharp edges off. And now you can see them here. They're all nice and clean and disassembled. And there are no sharp edges or anything that can catch you while flipping. I then go ahead and get them racked up and ready for anodizing and make an expensive set of wind chimes. I then go ahead and clean them in the ultrasonic cleaner. And you can hear that horrible noise. I then go ahead and cut to the end of that for obvious reasons, and they're nice and clean. So I go ahead and rinse them off. I then put the handles in some titanium multi-edge, 
and normally this is done at a boiling temperature but being that my multi-etch is about a year old it only takes a couple minutes for them to etch at room temperature so I see no need for them to be boiled. I then go ahead and put them in my makeshift titanium anodizing setup. It's very crude. I'll likely upgrade it in the future, but most of my anodizing equipment is for aluminum and not really titanium. So I just have a cup full of baking soda. As you can see here, I'm going through the colors. I'm gonna end up at a nice purple, but I'm just going through the colors slowly to show you what's there. With titanium anodizing, you put it in an electrolyte solution with an electric current and depending on the voltage you use it it varies the color you get so i'm going to a 70 volt purple as you can see here we're going through all the voltage colors and there's quite an amount of colors you can go through Here you can see the purple after all four handles are done. Here you can see the comparison between raw handles and the purple handles. So I go ahead and assemble them up and throw them on a blade. The assembly process went pretty well for this because I had already done it. And this is one of the newer blades I have made, so you can see there's a slight difference. And this lighting, the purple looks fine, but not very good. So I'm going to go ahead and step outside in a second so you can see a better comparison. You can see some higher volt anodes as well as the raw tie for a comparison of what colors you can do and how they end up looking. I went ahead and stepped outside so you can see this in some better light. And as you can see, it looks very good with the purple anode. 